Thank you for joining me again today. I, today we're going to talk about Microsoft Access Forms, uh, more specifically forms that you build in the design view. The design view is where you are able to put the form together, uh, put controls on the form in particular. So I'm going to open up the Access Database and I'm going to come up here to Create and I'm just going to go here to Form Design. Form Design will open up uh, this particular view. Um, this square right here shows what area I can put form, uh, the controls onto the form. I can modify the size of this with this cursor here by floating it over the corner. Then I can change the size of it. And uh, so I can kind of establish my starting palette. Now you do have control bar, scroll bars over here that uh, you can use if your palette is getting larger than the screen. Although I would be very careful and realize the kind of computers you're designing for. Like in my work environment, uh, many of the people I work with have laptops. And I'll, sometimes they'll be working in my databases without another monitor attached. So I need to be cognizant of the fact that they are restricted by the size of their uh, laptop monitor and make sure that I don't go beyond that number of pixels. And basically I have my laptop that's the same as theirs um, beside my regular uh, computer. And I, I just make sure that I put it over there and chest it out, make sure it's the right size. So the controls is in this part of the ribbon up here. It's labeled controls. It's the most prominent because it's really the one you're gonna be using the most. By default, it has the pointer established here. And if you then um, move it over one and float over it, it's, that's the first one. And the, most, the one that you'll use by far the most, it's the text box. If you have any data on your form at all, you'll be using a text box to have that data uh, displayed. And so you click on it and it changes your cursor. And then you can click on it again and it puts an unbound text box on, uh, on the screen for you. Now, what an unbound text box does, it just allows the user to type anything they want in there. It won't be saved from record to record because it's not tied to any table. And that's where the term unbound comes from. You go from an unbound text box to a bound one when you add a table to the form. And I'll show you how to do that later. We add a table to the form and then add a field to this so that the data put in this box here then is put into the table, okay? The text over here is the label for this text box. So if you want people to know what they're typing into, you come over here and you put the, the name in here. Uh, and that is the capture, pardon me, the name here is the name of the actual object on the screen. There are two objects here. There is the text box itself and the label for the text box. They are attached right now. In fact, if I move one, you'll see both of them move together. If I want to move them separately, I move them by the button there. And then I can move them separately. Or I can put them together like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to change the caption. So you can see this is a label. And see you, you can see that change on my text box label there. It says this is a label. It's not very clear when it's right over a when it's right over the top of a line there, but there's this is a label. And there are ways that you can change the color of that label and so forth. And we'll talk about properties um, in the next video. The next one up here is a, is a label. So if you want a label without the text box, you click on that one and you go here, and this is a label again. And that label is an unbound label. You can put it pretty much anywhere you want. I use this kind of a label for titles. Um, and I get a little error message. It's not associated with a control, and that is correct. This one is associated with a control. This one is not. And it gives you that reminder uh, message there. Up here, the next one over is a button. And buttons are really, really neat. When you're creating a menu, buttons are invaluable. So you noticed I clicked on the button. And I just clicked down here. It kind of gave me a default look and feel there. 
But it, most importantly, it brings up a button wizard for you, and it allows you then to tell basically what the button's going to do. Now, if I'm going to just re go and put a, a forward and next button maybe, or a last and first um, button there, I can move and change records all the time and, uh, and put those uh, buttons on the form. Uh, if I want to go the record operators, I can actually add or delete or duplicate a record, print, save, those kind of record uh, operations that I can do. And then I got form operations here where I can close and open a form. I can print it if I want, all, do all those things. And then I can open reports or preview reports or print them. And I can then decide to quit my application. Now notice over here we've got a sample popping up here of various uh, default graphics that, that could be used for the particular form. And then of course we have to wrap it up with a miscellaneous column where I can create a macro or I can run a query or I can print a particular table. I can even dial a phone for me. Uh, that's kind of a holdout from a long time past when you used to have your, your computer dial the phone uh, for, with those contact managers and that type of thing. So if I go to form operations, I'm going to go ahead and open a form here. I'm going to click next and it allows me to choose what form I want to open. So let's open the form customers. And when I click next, open the form and show all the records. There we go. If you make other selections like open a report or whatever, it'll give you the appropriate selections for that uh, particular item. Now, if I want to just use the picture, the picture is over here so you can see what kind of picture uh, it is or you could browse for your own picture if you've got a small picture you want to put on the button or if you want the text to appear on the button you can do that and I could just go ahead and type customers here and that's the way to look over here and I can click next and finish and I have a customers button and if I put this in form view if I click that customers button whoop, lo and behold my customers form goes ahead and opens up okay so I'm going to put this back in design view and see what else we we've got to offer here you can uh, go ahead and put a tab control in there uh, tab controls are really neat in that you can uh, put a whole lot more fields on a form that that you really than what you really have room for and you've really seen a tabbed form a lot before if you've seen a production database uh, where you've had multiple tabs on it like in a uh, um, I've seen it in uh, in managers for tasks when people call in trouble tickets and so forth. They'll have a tab form at the bottom where you can choose all kinds of different things. Um, and that's, that's available here. Uh, this is a hyperlink uh, for, uh, control here where you can put a link to a, another place in your database or another external link to a website even. So I'm going to go ahead and click this down arrow here because we have, you know, you can make lines, you can put boxes around your, your form. So there's some decorative items in here as well as, as items that actually do things. Okay. Here's the checks box control. You know, you, there are many times when you are having a customer just uh, check a particular box for a selection that they want. Uh, there's your checkbox control to do that. Here's your radio button control your option button if you want to put an option button here and you can make this into an option group where they choose option one to four or whatever and then you have some some coding behind it that tells the database what to do when a particular option is selected and, and then they are able to go on from there so those are your, your option buttons and you can actually insert a, an image and uh, I've played with a lot of images you can have it be a background image and put all your forms a all your controls on top of the image. You can also put your uh, uh, an image just in a picture and make a logo, put a logo on every page. Uh, and that would be a, a nice a, a way to do that. You can build charts and put those charts on your form. So all of your controls are up here and uh, available for your use. Now, when you get a bunch of controls on the screen, sometimes they're, they look like a mess like this one is. If I highlight all of these like this and I right click, notice I have a very lengthy 
context menu. And the one of the things on this context menu when it comes to aligning your forms, you can align to the left, right, top, bottom, or to the grid. Now to the grid, we'll just, you see these grid, grid dots in here, it'll just align it a little bit and move it to the appropriate grid. Um, but if you align it, let's say left, it'll line up with this leftmost one. If you align it to the right, it'll align it to this rightmost one. So all these will move to the right. All of, all of these would move to the left to here if I chose left. So I'm going to go ahead and choose left and away it goes and I can align uh, my table. So what you do is you build your form and you test it. What I want to do in the next video is talk about the property sheet and how you pretty this whole thing up. And do be aware that when it comes to building forms, this is really where you want to go get a good book that has documentation on all of the labels so that you can you know, look, that, look it up and see how it does. The help system in, in Microsoft Access is, is fairly good, but it's not necessarily the best way to keep looking up everything. Um, a lot of times I'll get uh, a reference book and it'll be dog-eared. I'll just keep it beside my desk because there's no way I even want to keep all of this information in my head. I would much rather make sure that uh, I've got my good memory, uh, memory keeper over there in the form of a good book where I know where I can find stuff rather than having to keep it all in my head or look it up online. Although Google is my friend when it comes to finding out how to do things and what control I should use and what uh, method I should use to implement to accomplish a particular task. So I hope this has been helpful. That is what the design view does for you. Uh, the next video I'll uh, be putting out is to, to talk about how to then use all this information over here on the property sheet for each of these, uh, each of these controls and the form and create a header and a footer and all kinds of wonderful things. So hope to see you again soon. Thanks. I want to thank you so much for viewing this video. We have great content on, on the site and I'm putting more content out every single day. There's a link to one of them on the side of the screen over here. Also, please help me grow the channel by subscribing. So hit that subscribe button a little bit lower on the other side of the screen and hope to see you again. Thanks.